Good morning, everyone. I'm Martin Kenny. I'm Sustainability Director for Tarmac. I want to share with you how Tarmac, as a manufacturer, is responding to the net zero challenge and how we're helping customers and clients to do the same. I'll explain how we're working towards achieving net zero carbon over the coming years, but also I want to highlight the many products, services and solutions that are already available today to help save carbon now. Now, before lockdown, I was on a Eurostar to London and I got chatting to the person next to me. He happened to be travelling from Sweden to start a new job and he was asking about how to get across London, how to use the tube. But as the conversation went on, he said he'd been on trains from Sweden for the last 24 hours. So naturally said, why didn't you fly? It would have only taken a couple of hours. He said he'd be too ashamed, too ashamed to be responsible for the carbon emissions from the flight. This might seem surprising, but flight shaming is actually a thing now, particularly in some countries. Now, reducing carbon has been an important issue for Tarmac for a long time. Actually, we've been part of emissions trading schemes for over 20 years. But like the guy on the Eurostar, over the last 18 months, we've noticed there's been a real sea change in the level of awareness, focus and understanding about the climate change issue across society. So climate change, it's entered the mainstream. The, the, the discussion is no longer about the science, it's about what government and what companies are doing about it. We've seen the school strikes and other protest groups. A generation has been taught about climate change and they see it as a threat to their futures and they're passionate about demanding action. My own children who are just starting their careers, they want to work for companies and in industries that are part of the solution and not part of the problem. And increasingly, employees and prospective employees want to work for organisations that are taking action and they want to get involved themselves. So this increased level of awareness is really driving an increased expectation on businesses and on our construction sector as a whole. So customers and clients are setting their own targets. They expect the suppliers to help them. Investors want to ensure long term sustainable returns. And this means effectively managing climate impacts and taking actions to reduce emissions following a pathway that's consistent with net zero. We've also heard earlier about how tackling climate change and achieving net zero is at the heart of government's policy. The recent commitment to a 78% reduction by 2035 really brings this into stark focus for me. This is not that far away, 2035 is within sight for all businesses and it needs to be considered in the investment decisions that we're making now. Government's introducing more regulation, it's introducing this faster and this impacts on all our businesses, our supply chains, our operations and our markets. So for organisations, working towards net zero isn't so much of a choice as it's a necessity for future success. But what is net zero? Achieving net zero will mean the UK as a whole will need to get a balance between the total amount of carbon it emits and the amount that it removes from the atmosphere. In reality, this means cutting carbon emissions to as close to zero as possible, then capturing or storing or offsetting a small amount of emissions that can't be eliminated. Achieving net zero, though, will require transformation of all sectors of the economy and transformation of how we all live. The built environment, including roads, infrastructure and maintenance, is responsible for around 42% of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions. So it will be absolutely at the heart of this challenge. Road infrastructure is important, not only for tackling emissions from the built environment, but also tackling emissions from transport. So organisations, local authorities all over the country are declaring climate emergencies and they're identifying actions they need to take today and over the next decades to reach this goal. Now, as the leading producer of construction materials and in road contracting and in maintenance services, we recognise Tarmac's role in reducing our own emissions and in helping our customers and clients to do the same. But no single organisation can do this alone. So achieving net zero will require collaboration right across the construction value chain. And we see taking action on climate change. It's not an option. It's absolutely essential. So what's Tarmac as a manufacturer doing to respond to this? Well, our company purpose is building our future and that's where it starts. This is building everyone's future. 
building our future is about the positive contribution that we as a business can make to the world and the challenges the world faces. So our products, our services and solutions as a business are vital to build the homes, schools, hospitals, workplaces, transport infrastructure, clean water, sanitation, renewable energy, all the things on which we rely as a society and all the things which are essential for quality of life. But building our future is about enabling the construction of this built environment in a way that creates sustainable net zero communities, that are great places to live, great places to work, that make people's lives better and create prosperity for everyone. Underpinning this purpose is our sustainability strategy. And you can see our priority sustainability issues on the slide here. Sitting right at the heart of our strategy is our commitment to climate action. We're committed to be net zero before 2050. But whilst climate change is undoubtedly one of the biggest, it's not the biggest challenge we face as society, it's also important not to forget about all the other sustainability issues, biodiversity, social value, resource efficiency, for example. And although the focus of today's conference is on net zero and climate action, we must remember that a single focus on carbon could result in unintended consequences. So when planning and designing projects, products and works, it's important to consider all aspects of sustainability, social, economic and environmental, so that we get the best outcomes overall. But back to net zero. Tarmac's commitment to net zero encompasses our operations, our products and our services. And while we can have the most immediate impact, obviously, on our own quarries, our own manufacturing operations and our own transport, it's actually vital, we believe, to take a whole life approach and a whole value chain approach. To achieve net zero, we need to consider every aspect of the raw materials we buy, of our operations, transport to the customer. But further, we need to look at how our products and services can reduce carbon during the construction process and critically how they can reduce carbon during the use of the asset and of course what happens to them at the end of life. Now we know from all the work we've done so far that there's no silver bullet, it's going to require action and innovation right across all aspects of this life cycle from the things we buy to what happens to them at the end of life. But the good news is we've been taking a lot of early action to address carbon and we've already achieved 24% reduction in carbon per tonne of product across the whole of Tarmac's business. And we already have many low carbon products and solutions that are already available today. We're also advanced in the development of net zero roadmaps. These roadmaps set out the steps and the technologies that are gonna be needed for each product line to transition to net zero. And they identify when these technologies will be available and what's needed to enable their implementation. So, for example, we've led the work of the concrete and cement industry um, with MPA and UK Concrete, which has recently launched a roadmap demonstrating the pathway for the cement and concrete sector to not only be net zero by 2050, but to get beyond net zero. That is, we'll be removing more carbon, carbon from the atmosphere than we emit each year. This is a really exciting step for the industry. When it comes to our customers, um, we want to support them to understand our solutions and how they can be used to reduce carbon throughout the whole life cycle of a project. So to do this, we use a model called four INS. The first IN is inbuilt, and this refers to all the things that we can do as Tarmac to build into our products to reduce carbon up to the point of delivery to the customer. So we're working with our supply chain partners to develop responsibly sourced low carbon raw materials, manufacturing plant, mobile equipment and transport solutions. We're investing in modern efficient plant and we're developing low carbon technologies. We use energy management systems at each of our sites so each site has a carbon reduction target and specific actions to achieve it. And we're driving energy efficiency, automation, switching to lower carbon fuels and electricity right throughout the business. 
So for example, 100% of our electricity now comes from renewable sources. And we've committed to all our cars and vans being electric before 2030. We're also evolving and innovating, leading the way in research projects um, to develop carbon capture technologies, hydrogen technologies, electric plasma technologies. And we're trialing lower carbon fuels like HVO, which is hydrogenated vegetable oil, if you didn't know. Another important thing that we're doing is developing low carbon product design. This, of course, has to be done without compromising performance. And we've already got a range of low carbon concrete formulations and many asphalt solutions too. These are innovations like Ultilow and Ultifoam that reduce the amount of fossil fuels needed for their manufacture. We've got products like Ultipave that means less resources needed, and therefore less carbon is used in, in uh, projects. And we've got um, systems for recycling old load surfaces back into new asphalt so reducing the carbon. So there's lots of things that we build into our products up to the point that they're delivered to the customer. Our next in though is called in construction. We recognise that our role goes beyond just delivering our products to the customer. In construction is about how our products and services can reduce the carbon emissions from the construction process itself. So, for example, how we can make construction process faster, reduce traffic, require less material, generate less waste or use less equipment. It's about how we can use renewable and low carbon energy sources during the construction process. One important example of this thinking is the application of digital asset management technologies. So how we can optimise the construction process and ensure maintenance is planned as efficiently and effectively as possible. Third in is in use. This includes how our products can help reduce emissions after they've been installed. So for example, products with enhanced durability that require less frequent maintenance or formulations that reduce rolling resistance and can reduce vehicle fuel emissions. And our fourth in is in support. We've got a wide range of tools, services and support to help customers and clients design and build more sustainably. These include guides to our sustainable solutions, whole life environmental product declarations, and we can provide carbon footprints for any product from any site. Unfortunately, though, we still get many inquiries for carbon footprints after completion of the project. And that's when it's too late to actually do anything about the carbon in the design. So we believe to achieve net zero, we need close collaboration across the supply chain. And particularly important is early supplier engagement and building whole life carbon right up front in the design stage of a project. This is the point when we can have the biggest impact on a project's carbon footprint. There's a whole range of different types of projects and works, and we have a very wide range of products with specific characteristics for particular application. So it's important that we're engaged early in projects so that our tarmac experts can help select the best product for each application and achieve the lowest carbon outcome. We also believe as a sector that we need to work very closely together to adopt consistent carbon measurement standards. These need to be based on whole life performance. These are standard like past 2080 for carbon management in infrastructure. And these standards need to be supported by robust and transparent whole life product information. And this is just the sort of information that Tarmac can supply. So while achieving net zero is an enormous challenge, it also presents many opportunities. Through whole life thinking, Tarmac is proactively developing low carbon technologies of the future. But it's not all about what might be possible in the future. It's about what we can do today. And the aim of this conference is to help build an understanding of what can be done today and highlight some of the opportunities that are already available to reduce carbon. So I do hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions that we've got planned for the day and I thank you for your time.